a problem, especially when we're up high in altitude, we have less atmospheric pressure, we can prime less. You know, if you read some of the literature, we'll tell you eight meters, that's eight meters assuming ideal conditions, mm, okay. running center of the curve. It's not necessarily the case that you'll get eight meters here. What would um, be a practical example here? What, what would you think you would get with that? Because I'm assuming at our altitude, let's say highest areas in Gauteng is about 1.7, so mm. you, that means you're basically, if you're pulling eight meters, you're basically actually at a vacuum. Correct. Very dependent on site conditions, on pipe work, um, on the pump where you're running. I will still answer your question though. Um, realistically, from up here, the most I've done in terms of my physical experience is between three and four meters. Three and four meters, okay. Yeah. And so pipe thickness for something like this, which has quite a high flow rate, what kind of pipe thickness should you be running? Because I can imagine any constriction in the pipe will dramatically decrease it, that on yeah. the suction side. So if, if you're going to be um, priming, you definitely want to go even 40 mil up, depending if you're really trying to push it, you'd want to go even bigger, possibly a 50 mil pipe. Non-return in here mean that you don't need any kind of a non-return in that Look, I, I supply 100% line. recommend putting a foot valve at the bottom, okay. Um, okay. just to, to keep the whole pipe primed. and Because it's also, even in a regular self-priming type application, you don't want to have to reprime every time you switch your pump on. And um, is the dry running protection on the, the these pumps good enough that it's okay to rely on it? I want to almost say on a semi-regular basis, just thinking of people who, um, uh, we get people running out of flow bins or tanks on trucks and those kind of things sometimes. Is it, is the, are the pumps comfortable enough with, with it that they can go into dry run and not damage it like on a daily basis? Um, well, you're going to get a lot of errors, let me put it that way. Um, this unit's very good at protecting itself, um, so you're going to get a lot of BL dry run errors on this. Okay. okay. So the pump itself will be okay. Um, and this is where I like to say, you know, a lot of the, your standard pumps, you don't mm. get the errors, that doesn't mean that they're not suffering. Yeah. It yeah. just means they're suffering in silence. This one will tell you there's a problem. Yeah, then one of the things I know about these is you've got the well, basically non-return valve thing at the back, which you can, which in, in your material it says you need to switch between whether you're going to be drawing basically at a vacuum or not. Mm -hmm. What, why is that there and what, what does that do? Yeah, it's, it essentially helps with the priming. Um, so it does help to keep the line um, primed um, when you are lifting and that's why you need to change over the spring. Is, is it a non-return valve basically before it goes into the pump then? Basically to make sure that the yes. water doesn't drain out of the pump? Yes. Um, it says if you then not drawing from say an underground source, you need to change it so you basically don't have the non-return there. Why? Is it an efficiency reason or is there a practical reason why you wouldn't want that non-return there basically? Okay, so um, essentially it's just gonna add extra <clears throat> Sorry, it's going to add extra losses to your system. Okay. 